I just saw this and I had to talk to you about it. Maybe you saw this too. A couple nights ago on The Tonight Show, during his opening monologue, Jimmy Fallon put this up on screen. And he said to his audience roughly, I'm gonna paraphrase here, hey guys, did you hear that the WWE is working with several states to legalize gambling, to legalize betting on the outcome of pro wrestling matches? There was no joke there. He just read that headline and his audience roared with laughter. And I'm one of these kind of people. If I'm gonna poke fun at the thing that I love, the art form that I'm passionate about, it's fine when I do it. But when an outsider like Jimmy Fallon does it, oh, I feel a certain kind of way about that. It kind of stings a little bit. But it drew into real painful clarity for me something about wrestling storytelling that I think I didn't understand in this exact way until I heard the way that a general audience reacted to that premise, right? So it's not as if the Tonight Show audience is made up of these diehard wrestling fans. There might have been a few in attendance, but it's just a general audience. And if you're not at all familiar with The Tonight Show, it's a long-running staple of late-night television here in the United States, where at the top of the program, before celebrity guests come out, they kind of like run down the news of the day. Here are the current events. Here are things you might need to know. And of course, this was an absurd notion to them, that people would bet money on the outcome of pro wrestling matches. Because, even to a general audience, let alone people that really understand wrestling in a nuanced way, there is zero tension surrounding who wins or loses pro wrestling matches. There's zero dramatic tension there, which begs this question. How do we keep people hooked on what we're making? How do we keep them coming back for more when there's zero dramatic tension around who wins or loses? And this isn't a new thing necessarily, right? This unfortunately has been like fodder for late night talk show host punchlines for like five decades now, right? The 80s, the 90s, the 00s, the whatever the last decade was called, and the 20s. It's not exactly new, but I feel like I understand it in a new way. And as I felt my brain racing in like four or five directions, thinking about solutions to this, I realized I don't have time to like put the green banner up and all that kind of fancy stuff. I just needed to press record and make this for you straight away. So whether you are someone who books wrestling angles you contribute ideas to the people that do, or you're the one performing these angles in the ring, I want to explore this concept with you, starting with some broad stuff, and then let's drill down and get real specific with some examples at the end. So stick with me, please. Let's think of, in a micro view, the smallest units of pro wrestling storytelling. Those are one promo, one match, one backstage skit. Single units, that's small. But for this, we need to pull back and go bigger. Let's jump to a macro view and look at complete stories. Wrestling angles. Wrestling angles need to tell complete stories if they're to be satisfying to the viewer. And we want our viewers to stay hooked. We want them to be engaged in what we are making. And at the end of the day, great pro wrestling is great storytelling. Every bit as much as the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, as much as Avatar The Last Airbender is, as much as The Last of Us is, even though it's not delivered through vehicles like movies or anime or video games or comic books or what have you, it's delivered through the vehicle of live combat theater, great pro wrestling is great storytelling. And what it needs in its tank so that everyone goes on the ride is dramatic tension. So how do we create that when none of it can come from the outcome? There's zero tension around who wins or loses pro wrestling matches. That's what that audience reaction told me when I saw the Jimmy Fallon clip. So, let's talk theory for a second. Let's say that comedy and drama are diametrically opposed forces. Drama raises the tension. Comedy relieves the tension, right? Thus the phrase comedic relief. And this does not mean that comedy doesn't have a place in pro wrestling. That's a whole separate video. In fact, like, I think I've already made that video on this channel. If so, it's going to pop up at the end of today's video, so you can watch it if you want. I'll find it. Nevertheless, drama has to raise the tension, right? That's what keeps people hooked. Tension going up. When the tension is relieved, that's a moment when sometimes viewers check out. It's why open loop narratives rarely close the loop entirely. And I'm going to touch on a couple examples, two great examples of that. I'll get, I'll talk about them at the end. Anyway, so how do we raise the tension. We know great storytelling depends on dynamic characters 
in engaging stories. And we want it to keep our audience hooked. And therefore, we're going to choose something that is diametrically opposed to comedy. So, golden rule of improvisational comedy, I studied improv for years, is yes and. We accept and we advance. So I want to choose something which feels oppositional to that, and I'm going to call it yes but. And I'm going to break that term down for you in this way. It means that yes, you can win, you can have a gain, you can find the want, get the accomplishment, etc. Yes, but there's always a negative or complicating consequence of that gain. This creates tension for any character, and I'm going to give you some examples now. I'm going to start with a pro wrestling example. I'm going to make it up as I go so that you understand the concept of yes, but. Whether you're booking the angles, performing the angles, or you're just curious about how this would work in storytelling in general. Maybe you're working on a screenplay. Let's dial into yes, but. So for this example, let's imagine that I'm like this very clean, virtuous babyface character in the world of wrestling, and my character's want is the championship title belt. Easy to imagine, right? Very common scenario. I work hard, and eventually I get to this championship title match against a heel champion. And in the midst of the match, the referee is distracted, and a third-party wrestler, someone who has a different quarrel with the champion, knocks them out and flees the scene. And just as the referee's attention is coming back, as I've seen everything that just happened, there's the champion laid out flat on their back in front of me, waiting for me to cover. Now, I'm a virtuous white meat babyface character. This would mean that I am willing to accept a tainted win. If I just cover my opponent here, I haven't really earned the title. This other wrestler cost that guy the title, but I didn't earn it. I didn't win it. And yet, that is the thing my character wants. And so, in a conflicted moment, I cover the champion, the referee counts three, and he hands me the title belt. I'm elated. I'm up on the turnbuckles. The fireworks are going off. I accomplished my want. That's the yes. I got the thing I'm after. But there's a complicating consequence of this. Maybe no sooner am I backstage than I'm confronted by my ex-tag team partner who says, I don't even know that I recognize you right now. Is that how you want to win the title? Your ultimate career goal? You want it to go down like that? There's going to be a dark cloud chasing your entire championship title reign. And you're going to have to live with that. And maybe that hits me like a ton of bricks. And I realize, what have I done? I have. I've compromised myself. Maybe I'm not proud of how I won this championship title. But I'm going to make the fans proud with how I defend it. i got to start making up for this with every title defense I have. And as soon as you get to the next part of the story, you confront this character with another yes, but another dilemma. The characters already compromise their moral code for a moment by accepting this tainted win. Well, now let's raise the stakes. Maybe in the very first title defense, while we are wrestling, the heel that I beat last month for the belt comes down to ringside with their entire faction. They knock the referee out. And they slide a chair to me. We think you've got what it takes to be one of us. We saw what you were willing to do last month. So show us. Go ahead. Here's the chair. The ref's out of the picture. There'll be no consequence for you. Whack the challenger. Keep your belt. Now I have an even bigger moral dilemma. Yes, I could achieve my want by holding on to the title belt. But didn't I just promise people that I was going to make them proud with the way that I defended the title? And now I'm even further compromised. What am I going to do in this scenario? And in the next chapter of the story, you're going to introduce another yes, but scenario. This type of storytelling continues to add tension no matter where it goes. And you might have thought of a dozen different ways the story could go, just hearing me lay that example out. This works for faces or heels. So I want to jump out of wrestling for a second and tie it to something else. Light spoilers ahead for Breaking Bad and some Avengers movies if you haven't seen them. Okay, here we go. If you've watched Breaking Bad, you know it is watching a somewhat middling heel transform across five or six seasons into one of the greatest heels in television history.
And this is because at each step of the story, Walter White is confronted with another yes, but. Yes, he makes this gain, but his marriage suffers as a result. Yes, he makes this key deal, but he gets his face broken in the process. Yes, he finally achieves this goal, but the son who once idolized him now despises him as a result. For every yes, there is a but. For every step forward, for every win, for every gain, there is a potentially negative or complicating consequence that he has to deal with, that he has to reckon with, that he has to clean up. And to flip that around for a second, right, let's think about uh, a great baby face character, of course, is Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A character, when not handled correctly, comes off as very dated and very corny. And yet, we love Steve Rogers in the MCU. Yes, the superhero gets to save the day, but he loses his love interest in the process. Yes, he rigidly adheres to his moral code, but he ends up breaking up the Avengers, the only family he's known since he came out of the ice, as a result. Yes, he regains his lifelong best friend, but he loses the trust of all of his new friends in doing it. At every step of his story, right through the last scene in Avengers Endgame, is a yes, but for Steve Rogers. Yes, he gets something that he wants or needs. He gets a win, but there's a complicating consequence, which is sometimes potentially negative, that he has to reckon with along the way. In all wrestling storytelling and storytelling in general, we need to go harder at that yes, but, because it adds tension. And the tension is the fuel that keeps people hooked. And that's what we want, especially in an era where there's zero tension around who actually wins or loses. Thanks for listening. Tell me your thoughts down below. I feel like I've got a couple more brewing up right now, but I'm not ready to put them on film for you. I'd love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, and all of those good things. Thanks.